hello welcome to the 11th week of this course so so far we have learned about data collection data summarization visualization and then we came to your sampling distribution concept which is an important tool in order to study your point estimation hypothesis testing and now confidence interval estimation so you must have experienced by now that why sampling distribution was taught to you before teaching your point estimation and other stuff because that those concepts you are basically using everywhere then we moved on to your statistical inference part where we learned about point estimation that how do you estimate the parameters and we learned about two different methods that is method of moments and maximum likelihood estimation and then we also learned about unbiasedness as well as the situation of expectation maximization algorithm that is em algorithm next we moved on to your hypothesis testing concepts and finally now we are going to learn about confidence interval estimation so let us see what is the agenda for this week so we are going to understand the concept of confidence intervals first of all then we are going to find out what are the confidence interval for your population mean variance and proportion so as you can recall we have been talking about these three from the starting of this course keeping in mind that we had numerical and categorical variables so based upon that we have mean variance as the summary measures for your numerical variables and proportion is used for your categorical variables so now we move on to the concept of confidence interval now the first question that arises is that why do we need confidence interval we have already studied about point estimation so we know how to estimate the population parameters so what is the need of finding out the confidence interval then the reason is that is that whatever point estimates you have calculated so far be it your sample proportion sample mean or the sample variance all these depend upon the particular sample that you have selected now if i change the random sample then these values would vary definitely even a single observation would make a change in these point estimates and that is why if you can remember in python also we write np.random.seed and give some number over there in order to ensure that if i am rerunning the code the same sample is drawn okay so it does not get updated because if the sample gets updated the values would change so now here also you have just the point estimates now the question comes up is whatever point estimate that i have calculated can i be confident that the sample mean that i have calculated is actually very close to your population mean or if you consider the proportion then the sample proportion is it close to the population proportion or not can we be confident about that so to tackle this we come up with the idea of interval estimate in which rather than finding the point estimate that is coming up with a single observation we find an interval of values or a range of values within which we can be confident that the actual population parameter would lie so you see the difference over here that in point estimate we just come up with a single value but there the drawback is that if i update the sample if i change a single observation the estimate would also vary in order to take care of that why not just give an interval or a range of values so that my parameter would lie within that based on certain level of confidence okay so that is why we studied point estimates first because your interval estimates are actually built around your point estimate so you first find out the point estimate you subtract this quantity and add that same quantity to it and then based upon that range basically is your confidence interval so if you find the lower and upper values between which we can be really confident that the population mean or proportion falls that is l is the lower point and this is the upper limit so if you can find such values within which your population mean or proportion is falling then we can say that this is your confidence interval now why do we have this term confidence why are we using this repeatedly why not just an interval or maybe some other name the reason would be clear now 
An interval of such values is referred to as a confidence interval. Each interval has a confidence coefficient which is reported as a proportion that is 1 minus alpha. So, alpha we have seen in hypothesis testing also and here if you report it as a percentage it would be 1 minus alpha times 100 percent. Okay, And the common values that we use for your confidence coefficients are 0 0.90, 0 0.95, and 0.99. So, corresponding to that, you will have a confidence level of 90%, 95%, and 99%. Okay. Now, let us understand the meaning of confidence interval. When I say that I am calculating a confidence interval for me with 95% confidence level, it means that we can be 95% confident that the population mean falls between these two endpoints. So, that is why we say 95% confident. So, we are not just finding out an interval simply. We are saying that we are this much percent confident that the population mean or the population parameter is going to lie within those two endpoints. Note that here we do not say that there is a 95% probability that the interval would contain the true population parameter because probability statements are always made for the random variables. And in this case, you are talking about your population parameter, population mean or variance or anything else. And those population parameters as we have defined earlier also that they are fixed quantities. We may not know them, but they exist and they are fixed quantities. So, you cannot associate a probability with it. That is why we say that we can be 95% confident that the population mean falls between these two endpoints L and U. Now, what it actually means is when we say 95% confident, it means that if I have a population, I am taking out a sample from that and based upon that sample, I find out the confidence interval. I mark that interval. Now, again, I sample from the same population. I calculate the interval and note it down. If I keep on doing it repeatedly, then at the end, out of all the intervals that I have obtained, in 95% of the cases, the population parameter would be contained in those intervals. And that is what is the interpretation of your confidence interval. So, I can show you how it is done. Now, what I do over here, so this is your population mean suppose. This is the population mean. I could write it as your mu suppose. Now, what I can do is, I want to find out the interval estimates for your for the CGP of the students in my class. So, what I can do is that I can randomly sample suppose say 30 students and then based upon that the information that they give I can find an interval estimate and that is interval estimate suppose I mark it here it is somewhat like this it is this interval. Again I will take another sample and now I again mark it somewhat suppose it is like this interval estimate like this if I keep on taking the samples and if I mark the intervals each time suppose this interval it does not contain the population so if you look at the first one over here the interval that you have obtained is actually containing the population mean value also second one is also containing that population mean third one is containing it fourth one is not containing it, it is outside that range. Similarly, I could have another one like fifth one and in this way you can keep on going. This one may not contain again sixth and then seventh I could have like this. Suppose like this, I am just marking suppose say 10 of those. Obviously, you will have more of them. So, one is missing. So, let me just mark over here again. Okay, 7, 8, 9 and 10. 
So you can see that one inter two intervals they do not contain the population parameter. These intervals do not contain the population mean. It means that if I am just taking 10 repetitions, so two cases are there which do not contain the population mean. It means that if I am constructing 80 percent confidence interval, if I am taking 80 percent of confidence level, then it means that out of 10, two are not containing the actual parameter. Okay. So, since obviously here uh, we have taken exactly two of them, however, there can be somewhat 90 percent or maybe 80 or something else than that because when you take large number of repetitions, then exactly it would come out as 80 percent. Okay. So, in 80 percent of the cases or 80 percent of the intervals would contain the true population parameter and rest of them may not contain. So, that is what is meant by this fourth and the sixth repetition. So, I hope the meaning of confidence interval is clear to you now. Always remember that we say that we are 90 percent or 95 percent confident that the population mean would lie between these two endpoints. Do not make a probabilistic statement about the population parameter in case of confidence interval. So, till now we have seen what is meant by confidence interval and what is the basic idea behind inter confidence interval? Now, note that in real world, we just take one random sample. We do not keep on taking samples again and again. We in fact just take one sample and this interval can be either correct or incorrect in the sense that it may contain your population mean or the population parameter or it may not contain it. So, in such a situation, it is better to make a statement that we can be just confident that we obtained a correct interval because 95 percent of the intervals we would have obtained are correct. If I would have repeated this experiment again and again, then in 95 percent of the cases, I would have obtained such interval estimates that would contain the true population parameter. And also, we know that the greater the confidence level, the more confident we can be that the confidence interval contains the actual population parameter. It is from the basic intuition that because if I say something that I am 90 percent sure that this is going to happen as opposed to if I say I am 95 percent sure or I am 95 or 99 percent confident that this is going to happen. So, which one of these two are you going to believe? You are going to believe the one which has higher confidence level in which I am more confident about certain thing to happen. So, in that sense, we say that we want a confidence, we want an interval in which we can be more confident. Okay? So, we will look into this point because this is a tricky thing that how, what confidence level we should take and why 95 percent is the most common interval that we consider. So, these things we will explore more as we move ahead. So, let us start with the first one that is the confidence interval for population mean. Now, in this case, again, if you can recall, there are two situations. The first one can be when the variance is known to you and the second one can be when it is unknown. So, let us un first understand the case when sigma square is known. The theorem says that if you assume that you have a random sample coming from a normal population with mean mu and variance sigma square which is known to you, then in that case we know from the sampling distribution that sample mean would follow normal distribution with the mean mu and variance sigma square by n. And if I standardize it, it would follow standard normal distribution. With this background, if I construct a confidence interval 1 minus alpha times 100 percent confidence interval for this population mean mu, then this is the interval that I obtain. So, what you see over here, this one, first one if you see, it is x bar that is the sample mean minus certain quantity and then you have x bar plus certain quantity. So, you are the quantity that you are adding or subtracting on both the sides is same and you are adding or subtracting it to your sample mean. And sample mean if you can recall, it is the point estimate when we are talking about the 
point estimation in case of the normal distribution when we are dealing with your population means so sample mean came out as the point estimate so you see that we are focusing on the sample mean and then we are subtracting and adding a quantity to it in order to get a confidence interval estimate now how do we prove this let us see the first theorem over here says that if you have a random sample coming from normal mu sigma square then 1 minus alpha 100 percent confidence interval for mu is basically x bar minus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n and x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n. So now let us understand what is this z alpha by 2 that I have written over here. To understand this, let us consider this figure over here. Suppose this is your normal distribution in this case. This is your minus z alpha by 2 and this one would be z alpha by 2 and obviously in between you will have 0 because we are talking about standard normal distribution. So this area, this shaded portion is alpha by 2 and again to this side we have alpha by 2. So basically this z alpha by 2 is that z value such that area to the right of it under the standard normal curve is alpha by 2. So if I say that probability that z greater than equal to z alpha by 2 is actually alpha by 2 and if I consider the area to the right of it or sorry to the left of it probability that z is less than equal to minus z alpha by 2 this would also be your alpha by 2. So this is what we have. Now we want to focus on the area between minus z alpha by 2 and z alpha by 2. So let us write that. So basically what is given to us is if I consider this area between these two endpoints I have 1 minus alpha because this is the probability in between these two. This is the region. Now z we have already seen what is z minus z alpha by 2. This would be z is what x bar minus mu sigma by root n less than equal to z alpha by 2. This is 1 minus alpha. Now you can simplify this interval over here. Once you simplify it in order to find the range for mu, so basically you will have minus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n is less than equal to x bar minus mu is less than equal to z alpha by 2 sigma by root n. And now I can find for mu, so we know that what will happen, so I can subtract x bar from both the sides, so it would be x bar minus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n is less than equal to mu and x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n. So what your interval is now? So finally if I substitute this over here, this thing that you have obtained in this case can be substituted back to this point, right? So probability of this basically would be 1 minus alpha. So I can write probability that this quantity is there. is less than equal to mu x bar plus z alpha by 2 this is 1 minus alpha. So what you obtain is that your interval estimate if I have to write so since I am saying estimate it means I need to write the realized value of the sample mean so that is why we write small x bar over here. So x bar minus this sigma by root n and x bar plus z alpha by 2. So this is your interval estimate for your population mean in case your sigma is known to you. So although we make over here a probabilistic statement, we do not say that the probability that mu falls in these two endpoints is 1 minus alpha. 
rather we say that we are 95 percent confident or whatever level is here i am this much percent confident that the population mean is going to fall between these two endpoints so just be careful with what, whatever statement you make so this interval is often referred to as the z interval for mean because as you can see from here that here we are using this standard normal distribution so we refer to it as the z interval so sigma is known so that is why z interval name suits to it right? so the first example over here is that suppose a manufacturing company produces light bulbs and they claim that their new production process results in longer lasting bulbs than the old process so for that they take a random sample of 200 bulbs from the new process and they find that the average lifespan is 1500 hours and the standard deviation is 100 hours and from the past data it is known that bulbs from the older process had an average lifespan of 1400 hours now based on a 95 percent confidence level is there enough evidence to support the company's claim that the new production process produces longer lasting light bulbs so older ones have the lifespan of 1400 hours and the newer ones based on this sample they have obtained it as 1500 hours so you want to find out an interval estimate for this so basically if your interval that you have found is containing 1400 it means that the newer one is also performing on an average same as the older one but if it is more than 1400 and it does not contain 1400 basically then you can say that the newer process is better so let us try to solve this so let me just note down what are the values given to us so we are given n as 200 and the sample mean x bar is given as 1500 hours and you have sigma as 100 and you have 95 percent confidence interval so you it means that alpha is your 0 0.05 okay because 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95 so now let me just so these are the given values to us so what is the formula it is x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n so if you look at the standard normal table then in that case z alpha by 2 means that 0 0.025 is actually 1.96 you can check this from your table since alpha is 0 0.05 so alpha by 2 would be 0 0.025 so let us substitute it over here so that is 1500 plus minus z alpha by 2 that is 1.96 into sigma that is given to us as 100 square root of n that is again 200. So if you solve this finally so I have the final answer so it comes somewhat around 1486.14 to 1513.86 1, you can cross check these values. So basically it shows that we are 95 percent confident that the average lifespan of the bulbs from the newer process would be between these two endpoints. So you can see that the older process had a lifetime of 1400 but that does not belong to this interval. So it means that the claim is correct that the newer process has a lifespan, average lifespan of more than 1400 hours. So this is how you interpret your interval estimates likewise we can have another example so let us see what is that so we have collected 12 measurements on the pH level in a particular lake over a month and the pH measurements are as follows assuming that the pH levels follow a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 0.1 find the 95 percent confidence interval for the mean pH level in the lake so instead of giving you the sample mean they have actually given you data so from this based upon this you can easily calculate the sample mean right x bar is 1 over in summation x size so you can simply calculate sample mean n is given to you as 12 and sigma is also given to you and z alpha by 2 so you know that it is 0.95 over here so it means 1 minus alpha is 0.95 
So Z alpha by 2 would be 1.96. So you can substitute the values over there and you can find it. So N is 12. Sigma is 0.1 given to you. Z alpha by 2 is your So Z alpha by 2 is given to you as 1.96. Okay, and the sample mean, if you calculate, it would come out as 7.192. So you can cross check these values again. So X bar plus minus Z alpha by 2, sigma by root N. So you substitute the values simply. So 7.192 plus minus 1.96 into 0.1 divided by root 12. And what you get is, it is 7.135 and 7.249. So this is the interval that you have obtained for the pH value. So we can be 95% confident that the mean pH of the lake would be between these two endpoints.